who of us that has adult children don't see their children going in different directions? In my case, I have six and they all lead different lives. They're all adults. They all have, most of them, all but one have children and they've gone their separate ways. Well, that's the case with Anna McNichol and her three adult children. Now, her, her husband has died and now she is trying to just go on. Now, Anna didn't have an idyllic marriage. In fact, her husband had more than one adulterous affair during their marriage. But the thing is, she loved him. And Anna was raised by a single mother. So she didn't want that for her three children. So even though her husband had cheated on her, she did what she could to keep their marriage together for the sake of their children. But now the children are in their thirties. And like I said, they've gone on with their lives. So what does that mean for Anna now? Well, the first thing is, um, she has to evaluate how she felt about her husband. Yes, she loved him, but did he love her? And what were the problems that they endured in their marriage and why did she stay with him even though he was a cheating husband? So then we learn even more. Now on the plus side, Anna became a judge at the, in, the, in her 50s. So she's very successful in her life. So she's not a struggling woman by any means whatsoever. She's Now she's a judge on the bench. But there's another layer to what she's going through while she sorts things out with her husband and with her children and with even the inheritances that the husband's will provided. Now she gets the bulk of his estate. Each child gets 10%, but there's another 10% that goes to a mysterious person. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if her husband left exactly 10% to each of his children and then another 10%, then it's very likely that one of those adulterous affairs left another left a child, a child that he never raised, a child she never knew about. And that is only compounding her grief. Like she stayed with him all those years. And now she learns that not only did her husband have another child, in fact, but her husband was a grandfather to a grandchild that he'll never meet. Then you have how each child, each adult child is dealing with their grief in their, excuse me for hitting that, in their own way. She has one child that's on the spectrum. She's a genius. She has another doctor that's a, another daughter that's a successful doctor. Then she has a son named Michael. He's doing well, but they're not doing well when it comes to the loss of their father. So in addition to that, she, her husband had a good friend named Joe for all those years. And she asked Joe more than once, did you know? Did you know? So that part of the story is explored, is how could someone who has been a family friend for decades know that their friend was cheating on their wife. So it was, it was a very, very good drama. And then there is one other thing. Remember I said that Anna was raised by a single mother. Well, now her mother is in a home and she has Alzheimer's or dementia and her health is, is declining quickly. And that has a strong impact on, um, Anna as well. And then there's another thing that happens, but it happens so late in the book, we won't even talk about that. So what is the whole purpose of this book? How do you bring everything back to everyone back together? How do you reconnect three adult children leading three separate lives while they all deal with the grief and the loss of um, Anna's husband, their father, and with the fact that one of those adulterous affairs produced a child. And if you like drama, women's fiction, 
This is by Robin Carr. I've read only a few books by her. Of course, I see her name all the time, but I don't always get a chance to read her books because my queue is like a mile and a half or 10 miles long. But it's it's really, really good, you know? And um, there is something else too, something very significant that I would be remiss if I didn't mention. Not only do we see how Anna is affected by her mother's uh, dementia, and the impact that it makes on her. But we learn about who in the family has challenges with mental health. And the fact that the author incorporates that, I'm just trying to move my coffee. The, the, the author incorporates mental health and its treatment and how it impacts lives and families. I think that is a very, very, very good thing because we don't want mental health to have a stigma. It should not have a stigma. And I love the fact that Robin Carr addresses it, handles it with grace and makes it very, very relatable. And the thing is, we want to see this fractured family come together. Well, does a family affair do that? Will Robin Carr bring all of these characters back together because you basically have five protagonists in this book Anna being the chief protagonist the three children and then you have Joe so how does Robin Carr the author bring everything and everyone back together excellent excellent book I haven't actually rated it on Goodreads but I'll probably give it I know I'll give it five stars it's going to get five stars because I love the fact that it deals with mental health and if that that alone yeah definitely five stars so that'll be it i will link the book in the description below i think it's already available yes it came out april 5th it's a mirror publication and i think that's it so i'll be back with more bye bye